guys, I'm Savus, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to show you my watercolor collection. I've been collecting watercolors for the past 10 years and I ended up with a pretty impressive collection. So I'll start from the oldest paints to the newest paints that I have in this collection. And I'm going to start with White Nights. This white plastic palette, this is my oldest watercolor set. So back then they were known as Yarka, probably in the Western world, they were not popular at all. This set I got originally from Ukraine and I don't think it was available online back then. Like it was pretty rare to find anywhere outside of former USSR countries. This palette is a little bit modified by me. These are the original colors that it came with, but over the years, as you can see, I switched a few of them, I removed a few, I added others. So yeah, this is my oldest palette. And because I like these paints so much, I actually got this bigger set from my grandparents. Now this is the older edition of their wooden set. It has 48 colors. Again, this is not the original um, pens. What I mean by that is, um, these are the colors that it came with and I kind of switched pens, so yes. I really enjoy this set, as you can see some of these. By the way, yeah, I'm going to show you a little bit of difference between the old and the new. So this is the old pen, this is what it looked like. Um, and this is the new one. The plastic on the new one is not transparent, it is white and the shape is a little bit different. Both of them are amazing. White Knights are making great progress and they become more and more attractive to the, to the Western uh, market, which is great. Anyway, so I have two of these sets and I also have these pens that are just in a pencil case. I actually have even more in another pencil case, but basically these are pens from the 24 set and I will use them to replace the pens once I run out of colors in my main White Knights palette. My next set is these beautiful Sennelier. The thing is, I really wanted some Western paints after I experimented with, black, uh, with White Knights and I wanted something with really high quality and I was actually doing my research and I really wanted the M. Graham paints but back then uh, they were nowhere to be found so I asked my parents who went to Las Vegas, I asked them for professional watercolor palettes uh, and they came back with this. This is the Sennelier Travel Box which is a very interesting set because it has so many pinks and reds and almost no other colors, which is interesting. A lot of these are very similar and I think these are basically meant more for florals rather than anything else. This box I wouldn't take for traveling because uh, it's very easy to open. It is a beautiful box though and the palette is connected to the lid so when you close the palette the lid closes up automatically. Same, things when, same thing is when you open the lid the palette comes out on its own which is really cute. I really like the way this palette is built but it's definitely for the studio. Another set that I have by Sennelier I bought myself here in my country and this is the Sennelier Aquamini. These are professional grade paints, but they're just in a very small case with literally no mixing space. I do use this part to mix. These are really good quality and they were at a very nice price. The only problem I have with this is that this paintbrush, it is very sticky for some reason. I guess the covering is not of a very high quality. But again, this brush is very small, so I don't think I would normally use something like that. So, the next guys here are these three palettes and they all have their own story. I used to have more travel palettes, but these are the one I kind of stick with. Now this one is, I think, one of the only student grade palettes that I still have in my collection. And this is the Van Gogh uh, brand. I got this from my mother for Christmas a few years ago 
and I really like it because it has sentimental value. Actually, Van Gogh, they have a very high quality paint um, compared to the price. The price point is very low and they have a really nice brush with this set. The only problem that I really have with it is that, as you can see, the spaces between the pens are really big and I could, at this size, I could squeeze three times as many pens as they squeezed in here. The big advantage of this palette is that I do have a lot of mixing area. This tray is basically removable if you want to wash it or something like that. And the brush, uh, it has this scoop behind which allows you to pop out the pens and also pop out this tray. Let me see if I can do it with, with one hand. Yes, I can. And these are my swatches. I can just take it out and use it with any other palette, palette as my field palette, which would be great. Okay, this is one of the prettiest small palettes on the market ever. This one is by Winsor & Newton. So basically what you have you open it like this, you have three mixing areas and you have a small brush as well as a bottle for water, it's like a small flask for your water. And here I used to have a sponge but I removed the sponge in order to put a little bit like two more pans. These are not the original paints that came with the set, again I really like to mess with my palettes and try different color combinations. But this small set is really cute for traveling. Oh, of course, this part, um, you can attach it here and it serves as a water reservoir if you need it. So, this is one of my travel, cutest travel kits ever. And as you can see, it is much smaller, but again, it has more pens and more everything than the big Van Gogh palette. And they are pretty much the same weight. Maybe this one is even heavier because it has more plastic in it. And this is the most expensive uh, watercolor palette, portable painter. Um, it's really cute. This thing might get lost one day. But other than that, just attaching your... Yep, wait, wait, yep. You can just attach it like this. Pour your water on both sides and you can attach it, like put it on your leg, put it on your knee when you're drawing, or it can be stable on a surface. A lot of mixing space. I really do like this palette. It comes with a double brush, which means there is a bigger brush on one side and then once you open it and reattach it, you have a smaller brush on the other side. Okay, so the next one on the list is, I think, the one that I might actually soon declutter, get rid of, donate it to someone. And this is the Kuretake Gansai 36 colors palette. Um, as you can see, the colors are pretty bright, but they are very shiny. And I really like traditional watercolors, so I never really use them. They're really unpredictable. I know they're not meant to work as traditional watercolors, but really, I can't really handle them that well. As you can see, I have three colors missing. I put these colors in a separate tan. So these are the like, number 43, number 67, and number 32, if you're interested. And this is the palette that one of my friends use. And she paints almost all of her paintings and all of her sketches with these three colors and she achieves a really really nice range of colors and I really wanted to try it too that's why these three are outside of the normal package yep uh, definitely not sure about keeping these guys I might do something else with them okay. so we're moving on to two beautiful beautiful palettes that I barely use and both of them are by Schmincke both of them are very not very, I don't know, but these are limited editions. This one came for their anniversary and this is the original um, palette that they had a hundred years ago or a hundred and something years ago. I don't remember. I think it's from the beginning of the century. Some of these paints are unique and are no longer made by Schmincke and I really like their design. These are really beautiful and pigmented. I used them a few times and I really enjoy them. This is a birthday gift from a friend. The other one I got myself, this is uh, 120, 
25 year anniversary kit. These are their specifically unique, interesting colors. And I do have a list here saying what colors these are because Schmincke only mentions them as numbers. So I have a cadmium yellow light, a cadmium yellow hue light, vermilion, permanent carmine, ultramarine finest, Prussian blue, permanent green, yellow raw ochre, burnt sienna, van dyke brown, and ivory black. What we have here, uh, it's actually the, pan, uh, the tubes and the pens for them. I'm actually using main green pen in another palette, that's why it's not here. Other than that, these are very unique Schmincke colors, they're all really beautiful and I would definitely like to paint with this palette more because it brings me a lot of joy and I think that the design where you have both tubes and pens is kind of unique in the watercolor world and the colors of course are amazing, they're really beautiful and yeah, I'm going to paint with this palette more now that I think. So this is the way I store my watercolor tubes basically what i have here these things they're meant for ties right so um this is for tie organization now i took clips i bought clips of different colors and i kind of color coded them so for example this one has green and blue and also grays or blacks this one has red and violet and again, like shadowy colors or grays and blues, not blues, sorry, uh, but you get the idea. Here I have my uh, earthy tones, my oranges, my yellow. Let me space them out a little bit. So yeah, these are my tube colors. What I have here, I have Windsor & Newton. I have a lot of Daniel Smith. And of course, I have my beloved M. Graham. I really like M. Graham. I actually have most of M. Graham sets that they offer that doesn't have duplicates in them. I ordered all of them um, a few years ago. Yeah, so I do have a lot of these. I saw them in another YouTube video. I don't remember. I think it was a Russian one. Um, but yeah. This is a great idea of organizing. This is a really easy way to find the tubes you're looking for. And oh, of course, I also have some Mission Gold in here. This is actually one of my favorite colors I, that I mostly use for pretty much everything. This is the Horizon Blue. If you have some extra money, if you are not very strict with the palette that you're using and you like to experiment with really nice high quality paints, then I'm really glad to introduce you to my biggest watercolor set so far and this is the Sennelier 98 pens, sorry tubes, 98 tube set. Yep, that's a really big boy and it comes with a brush as well and the box is wooden but it's not of a very high quality because it doesn't look completely. There's a problem with one of these hinges. It costs a little bit less than $500 I think so that would be around four to five dollars per per tube and for professional watercolors that's a really low price these are 10 milliliter tubes these are of the highest quality sennelier paints some of them i think are duplicates but other than the duplicates you would get all the range of sennelier paints and they are really really good and i really recommend so them. before i move to the palettes that are my workhorses i would like to mention a few other palettes that i have here first of all this is the etcher mini palette that i'm going to make a review on very very soon i had it for a very long time but i haven't used it yet but i already have things to say about it basically this is what my palette currently looks like and uh yeah there will be a review on this one really soon on my channel the other palette that i have is a sennelier palette that i tried to make i don't really like it i think i'm missing a warm red somewhere in here that kind of prevented me from using the entire thing but i am going to experiment with it more basically these are just paints from the tubes that i showed you earlier yeah moving on this is the pencil case I was talking about at the beginning of the video. This is where I keep most of my leftovers and pens that I couldn't didn't have like any other 
place to put them in so these are black knights these are just pins that I got from a friend of mine and here I have pens that I basically scraped from other palettes that I didn't want to use anymore these are really bad looking pens of burnt sienna um, ochre and I think this is transparent iron oxide I'm not sure but these are paints that I tried to make myself which explains why they are <laughs> weird looking because these are handmade this one I'm afraid to say these are two Prima sets I think these are Prima sets I bought them when they were new and back then I think I bought them because of their metal tin that I wanted to use for my other paints this is by the way a Prima color tin the one that I showed you before so here I have two sets uh, combined together and this is a very random white knights yellow ochre sitting here I don't know why I keep it here never mind uh, I don't use them that much, but I really like the pigments and I really like the colors. So this is actually an interesting palette that I might use in the future. These are not professional grade and I'm not sure about their light fastness. That's why I'm trying to avoid these paints. I don't like paints that cause any kind of frustration. And if I'm not sure about the, their light fastness, then this is a source of frustration for me. Okay, so here it is, my biggest shame. This is an amazing Rembrandt Royal Talents, professional grade, beautiful, never before opened box of Rembrandt watercolor paints. Yes, I am really, really ashamed. I got them for an amazingly low price and that's why I bought them. Guys, don't buy watercolors on impulse, they'll just sit for years and you won't use them as much as you should. These are really beautiful, these are fully professional, they are amazing, I haven't tried them yet, I read so many reviews about how great they are and hopefully really really soon I'll be able to open and try them out for myself. At some point in my life I realized that trying to buy beautiful sets with pens is definitely not the right way to go if you want more than just a collection and you want the functional set of course when you're buying a pen set it's really tempting it's really beautiful it seems like someone has thought about a color palette for you and you are just very tempted to buy them but if you're a practical artist you know that every time you buy a set you're buying and you're paying for some pens that are that you're never going to use and the other thing is when you're buying uh, pen sets then you are overpaying and they are overpriced. So the best solution if you're using a lot of watercolors is of course to buy tubes. This is my first plastic palette. This entire set, this entire palette, you can see the paints that I'm using here. Everything here is Winsor & Newton Professional Line. This is all of my Winsor & Newton paints. And these are the first professional tubes that I ever got. And it was a very big and very expensive event in my life. So this was kind of a milestone for me. And I still use this palette sometimes, but not as much as I wanted to. Because Winsor & Newton, let's face it, for me, this is not my favorite brand. The first real palette that I've been working on really hard to build exactly the palette that I would like and every color here, not every color here, but almost every color here was handpicked by me. Some of them, most of them are actually M grams, right? The ones here. And I replaced some of them. Now replacing tube paint in these wells it's really complicated because you have to scoop the old paint and you're losing a lot of paint in the process and then you have to rehome it somewhere and it's definitely not the purest not the cleanest because it's been in this palette for forever and you don't know if you just if you should just throw it in the trash bin or i don't know what so basically changing paints here was a big big no-no and for me, I started this palette when I was actually forming my own preferences. And as you can see, I have a lot of like um, 
white knights glued in here and I have Schmincke and I have I think all these three are Daniel Smith no this one is Engram these two are Daniel Smith this is white knights so this is a really weird um, salad of different paints and different brands and at some point I think I wanted to replace more than 10 of these colors that I have here and this was too much to handle like replacing pens here it's hell so I decided I would just grab another palette and I'll just fill it with the paints that I wanted and that's guys how we move to my main workhorse yep you're right the ugliest the cheapest the most horrific palette in my entire collection is the one that I grab 90% of the time every color here is completely hand-picked from my experience as a watercolorist and these are the colors that I use Again, I'm not actually using 100% of them. I think I'm using around 70% of the colors that I have here. Um, some of them are actually basic colors that I'm not even using, like these ones are not very popular in my palette. Again, um, oh, that's interesting, that's sticky, ew. Again, they're all hand-picked. I chose each and every color here. This one, the one that attaches the most cat hair, is the red ochre i made this paint myself i grinded the pigments i added my own um, binder i created my own binder i looked for recipes and i did interesting stuff so basically yeah this is my paint i'm really proud of it this is my palette that's the one that i use after all the beautiful palettes that you've seen this is the one so that's it for today. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. That would really motivate me to create more content and it will also help me with YouTube's algorithms to bring more audience to my videos and share it with the world. If you have any experience with these watercolors that you would like to share, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what's your favorite brand and what's your favorite set or what set you would like to purchase in the future. And of course, I'll see you guys in the next time. Bye!